In finance, we have a lot of applications that use concepts that you learned about in an introductory statistics class. And so because of that, I want to take a little bit of time and work through some of those concepts in the context of finance problems so that you can have a little bit of a uh, review. And so this is the first of a few of these uh, statistics review videos. And so just to make sure we're all speaking the same language, let's begin with a few important terms that uh, we'll be using quite regularly. First, a random variable. A random variable is a variable whose value is unknown, and it's something that you can think of as the outcome of some experiment. And so a prime example of a random variable in finance is a stock return. We don't know what a stock's return will be in any given year. So it's a random variable. And then each year we see the return. So we see the outcome of, um, of that experiment. Second, an observation. An observation is just a single outcome uh, from one of these experiments. And so we see a particular value that the random variable takes. And so an example of that is, uh, is here. In the year 2017, a stock returned 2%. So that is a single observation uh, for that stock return. And then finally, a sample. So a sample is just a group of observations from a particular random variable. And so here on the right, we see a sample containing six observations of a stock's return. And these observations are annual observations, right? So we see one that occurs in 2014, one in 2015, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And then here are the various values that the, um, the stock return uh, took in those years. Some of our key statistical concepts are here, um, and these, these concepts describe uh, the process that is uh, driving the realizations of the random variable. So these concepts, a mean, a variance, and standard deviation, in other words, describe what's happening uh, to generate these different values of a stock's return. So a mean is uh, an average, and so it's, uh, it says on average, uh, what value will the random variable take? It's not a guarantee that will happen in any given year, but it is a statement of what we expect to happen. And so um, oftentimes we would say a mean return, we would call a mean return um, an expected return. Second, uh, the variance, the variance is a measure of the dispersion of the various outcomes. And so how far apart are they? Or in other words, how far are um, observations uh, away from their expected value? A variance is measured in squared units. And its standardized counterpart, um, the standard deviation, is measured in units. So the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. And so again, it's measured in units. And so um, in the context of stock returns, um, units would be percent. Um, a variance is measured in squared percent, which is a little bit hard to conceptualize, but a standard deviation, which is the square root of that, is once again measured in percent. So let's go to an example. And so in this example, I'm going to take that sample of stock returns, so those six observations of annual stock returns, and I'm going to use them to estimate three quantities, the stock's expected return, the variance, and the volatility. So recall again, the expected return is statistically, this is the mean, and the volatility is uh, a word that we use to describe a return standard deviation. And so anytime you hear the word volatility in the context of stock returns, I want you to immediately think standard deviation. And so for this example, I'm just going to go straight to an Excel spreadsheet uh, to illustrate the, uh, the calculations, and that way we can work through them step by step. 
All right, here's an Excel spreadsheet containing our sample of returns. And so again, we've got six observations of annual returns. And so our task is to calculate the expected return and the variance and the volatility. So we'll start with the expected return. So I'm just gonna label that here as the mean. And so that's simple, right? So all we need to do is add these up divide by six and we have the mean and so I'll use the average function in Excel calculate that and so we see an average return or an expected return of 4.33 percent and so you can kind of eyeball this um, this distribution of returns here and you can imagine 4.33 percent is kind of being in the in the middle um, of that okay so we've got the expected return um, estimate done and so the next thing we need to do is estimate the variance okay variance in words is the average squared deviation from the mean okay so let's think about what uh, this, this this means so let's start with the deviation from the mean so each observation has a deviation from the mean right so that's just the value of the return in a given year minus the mean return and so we'll make a column here representing the deviation and so I'm just gonna say uh, this cell is equal to the return for that year minus the mean value and so I'll go back into this formula and anchor my mean value cell so that I can uh, just drag this down and so you can go and click in these one at a time and you'll see that that each one of these is a deviation from the mean all right so we've got deviation from the mean taken care of we need squared deviations right we want to square these because we want to treat positive deviations and negative deviations as the same right there's distance from the mean we don't care if it's above or below which is the distance from the mean because we're calculating a measure of dispersion and so we'll make this column the squared deviation and so again we'll go observation by observation and square the deviation so uh, in this cell I'm going to say it's equal to the deviation raised to the second power so it's the deviation squared once again I'll copy that down and so I have uh, the squared deviations and then finally um, we need the average of them okay well that's easy uh, enough as well so to calculate an average of this column again what we would do uh, traditionally would be to just add them up and divide by six okay uh, there's a slight uh, tweak here though um, and it's because we are estimating the variance uh, from a sample of data and so what that means is uh, since we're estimating it from a sample there's actually some error that can creep into our estimates because our um, it, our mean value is an estimate as well and so what we want to do statistically is uh, make our estimate of the variance a little bit bigger than the average and so the way we do that is instead of dividing by the number of observations after we add these up we're going to divide by one less than the number of observations instead of dividing by n we're going to divide by n minus 1 which is 5 okay and so we'll start by summing the squared deviation. So that's equal to the sum of the deviations. The variance is going to be the sum divided by one less than the number of observations. So we're going to divide by five. And so there is our variance. Final task is to calculate the volatility or the standard deviation standard deviation is just the square root of the variance 
And so we're just going to say the square root of that cell, and there we have it.